Welcome back to another episode of Detroit 360, your personal guide to all things Detroit. I'm your host, Sheila Grant. So today's activity allows our students to hear about issues in the community, things they know about or care about, and to express their view. It's always important for our students to share their voice and to hear from students so that the legislatures and the people that run the city can take that into account when they're making great decisions. Hello Detroit, this is Council President Pro Tem Mary Sheffield and I am here at Benjamin Carson High School. I am so excited to be here. This is my fifth annual State of the Youth event. Today we're gonna focus on some of the national news related to gun violence and how young people have been able to use their collective voice to effectuate change. We wanna inspire some of our local residents here in Detroit to use their same voice as it relates to gun violence and education and a lot of the social issues that are plaguing the city of Detroit. We're also going to talk about the importance of education and civic engagement and allow the young people to let us hear their concerns and how we as elected officials, we as leaders can help make sure that their issues are addressed. What's up, my name is Spud. I am here today at the State of the Youth Symposium because I think it is extremely important for us to be able to have dialogue with the youth. Sometimes, most of the time actually, us as adults, what we do is is that we judge the youth and what they are doing in life, the way that they wear their clothes, the music that they're listening to, the robberies, the crimes, and we have this unfortunate uh, depiction of what we think our youth are doing as well as what we think our youth are uh, heading to. And I'm here today to be able to have a conversation with the youth and be able to ask them the questions of, of what is it that we need to do as adults to be able to help you to be able to get to the next level. Uh, we're here today for the kids because this is something that's very important. It's close to my heart because I was born here, raised here, and I'm going to be buried here. So I'm Detroit until it's over with. I carry the Detroit flag like nobody else when it comes to marketing, fashion, sports, whatever it is. If it's Detroit, I'm here for it. And uh, Mary is a great friend. Uh, she's like my sister, so I've been there with her since day one, and so when she called, it was a no-brainer. So we here, I'm a part of the panel, we're going to talk to the kids, we're going to kick it to them, we're going to try to uplift them and build them up, you know, something that I didn't have when I was going to school. You know, we didn't have people that was doing stuff in our community already, doing things, coming to our schools and talking to us. We had a couple of people, but it wasn't like how it is now. My name is Judge Aaliyah Sabri, and I am here to uh, help give a wonderful panel discussion about the state of the youth and a symposium to discuss education, influence of hip hop and all different topics to uh, give some inspiration to the high school students here and hopefully answer some questions and share our stories with them. So of course I want to thank council member, President Pro Tem Mary Sheffield for inviting me and hopefully we'll have a good symposium. You know, it's all about the youth, it's all about the kids. Everything that we do, all of our programs uh, is predicated towards uh, the youth and uh, growing new minds and, and, and bettering the next generation. So it's very important for us to get out here um, and not only be a uh, vocal uh, perspective for the youth, but to be active uh, as well. I would like to thank the folks that were involved, particularly Councilwoman Sheffield, who has organized this and helped to make sure that our students get to share their voice and be a part of this activity. Mostly we just here to talk to the kids, let the kids know we're here for them. And we want them to see people like themselves that came from them, that came from their neighborhoods, that came from their city, to say that, hey, they did it, I can do it too. I'm excited to be here. I'm moderating the panel. I'm so honored, you know, it's gonna be fantastic. We got some great people in the house. You know, I'm just, this is gonna be great. 
So I'm so excited to announce that because we have had a tremendous success with State of the Youth event and the feedback that we have got from our young people, not only am I going to commit myself to finishing the high schools in District 5, I have also committed myself to touring all of the high schools throughout the city of Detroit to make sure that this event is reached to every single student here in the city of Detroit through the Detroit Public School System. And make sure you give us a call if you would like this particular panel discussion brought to your high school. I'm Giovanna Watson, the owner of Detroit SIP. I'm enjoying the momentum that's going on around the development going on in the area. As this journey has progressed, the actual importance of the coffee has diminished. But for me to be able to see all of the pieces of the community come into this space and watch business deals go down, friendships being made, all of the various activities that occur inside of here aside from actually drinking coffee, it really has enabled me to see my dream come true, which is uniting the community. I think it's helping change the future of the neighborhoods because people don't have to go to the suburbs for small businesses and coffee shops and what, what have you. They can go right up the street and feel safe. The attention of a neighborhood is first the responsibility of its citizens, and then the government has to come in and assist the citizens with what their needs are. If we wait on outside attention to make change, it's gonna take longer. So the citizens themselves have to pay attention to their neighborhood instead of we're waiting on someone else to do it. Living in the area where the coffee shop is located has enabled me for the first time in my adult life to work, live, and play all within the same zip code. And that's important to me because a lot of hard work, sweat, blood, tears, all of it goes into operating this business. For that energy to actually be utilized in my own neighborhood is really a dream come true because you either do it for someone else and help their dream come further along or you can do it for yourself and watch your own dream come true. So I get to do both. Uh, uh, so I have a job and I have a dream and the two are not the same. But what I'm able to do here actually brings me fulfillment. And for the first time as an adult, I'm actually in love with the work that I do. And by that, I mean the work here at Detroit SIP. Well, what I see uh, for the future of this area is actually uh, more positive than when I first started this journey. And I can say now that I really don't see the amount of litter and trash that I would see on a constant basis. And when I'm here, um, I watch residents who just walk by and pick up the trash on their own and they, because I'm not open every day, uh, they come by and they look out for it and they keep it clean and everybody's really excited um, about the things that are going on. And I think they can sense that it's genuine. You know, I'm not just an opportunist looking to come to a neighborhood, open a business, and then take all of the resources out of the neighborhood. So I see this as a thriving community in the very near future. It's more than just a cup of coffee. We know through the revitalization uh, project, it's gonna be an area that is gonna be uh, restored. We're looking for families to come back into this community. We're looking for businesses to come back into this community. This project is on time. I really feel the vibe of it. I really feel the environment or uh, the atmosphere changing for the better with this project. There's so much more that can be done in this neighborhood, but you know, for the people that stuck around, they'll be able to see the benefits of it. They'll be able to see the real beautification after the revitalization. Because what you have to revitalize is the mindset. Business owners want to be in neighborhoods where people are moving in, where there's more rooftops, where there's more customers. And so if we do a few things at once, move people into these houses, which we're doing, run Motor City Match so folks like Detroit SIP have a little bit of a boost to start their business, and build out a beautiful streetscape all at the same time, we think when you do those three things together, 
you'll see neighborhoods come back. In 2016, the city of Detroit and Invest Detroit started the Strategic Neighborhood Fund to invest $42 million in three pilot neighborhoods. The Strategic Neighborhood Fund coordinated investments in housing, businesses, and streetscapes to revitalize these areas. For many years, we had a nice economic growth here in this community. So we are thankful for this opportunity that they want to rebuild businesses and have businesses come back into this community, into our neighborhood. And we're going to have uh, where they're going to rehab homes where we can have neighbors come back in. That's what helped build communities. Now we're expanding the Strategic Neighborhood Fund to seven more areas, raising $130 million to create 10 vibrant, growing neighborhoods throughout the city. While SNF 2.0 investments will foster more vibrant and growing neighborhoods, the city will also raise $250 million for the Affordable Housing Leverage Fund to ensure these growing neighborhoods remain inclusive and affordable for both longtime residents and new residents. The fund will preserve 10,000 existing affordable housing units and create 2,000 more over the next five years. We believe that is proof that people want development in the neighborhoods, that it can be successful, and that it can be profitable. And we firmly believe that they are the most beautiful, affordable units that the city has ever seen. Because of how Chris and I grew up and who we grew up with, uh, designing affordable units and building affordable units is personal. We know the people who are going to live in there, whether or not we know the specific residents that are going to live in there. And so we took great pride in ensuring that the units that we built whether market rate or affordable, really met the standard that we would have our friends and our family to live in. It's beautiful, you know, I got the biggest one bedroom apartment here, you know, for a reasonable price, less than $600 a month. You know, I can't beat that, you know, I'm paying less than $600 a month in an apartment, you know, a nice, nice lifestyle apartment, it's beautiful. The success of SNF 1.0 was due in part to the extensive community engagement around the projects. SNF 2.0 will continue to work closely with the community in every neighborhood to encourage and empower the residents to stay and be a part of the city's comeback. Following a year-long community engagement process, plans are already underway in the Grand River Northwest area. The community engagement process is just kicking off in Jefferson Chalmers, Russell Woods Narden Park, Campo Banglatown, and Warrendale Cody Rouge. Planning for Gratiot 7 Mile and East Warren Cajou will kick off in early 2019. So we're very pleased uh, with the mayor and the planning department. But one of the reasons we're, we're happy about the planning department is we planned alongside of them and they are co-signing all of our work. They talked about murals. Well, we've been painting murals for 15 years. They talked about art and um, community space and festivals. Basically all the stuff they were talking about is what we've been working on for 30 years. So it's nice to work with a planning department that plans with you and then actually implements. You know, you typically get the older, more established homeowner, but that's not really representative of where we are now demographically in our neighborhood. So we have to think very strategically about the way uh, we engage young folks and how to because they have the energy so it's about like manifesting that energy into something very positive and something that is going to be able to sustain this neighborhood when these people that are coming to these meetings are gone i think we've started uh, but we have a long way to go in terms of uh, direct engagement you can see in their plans um, because i've been to all of their meetings pretty much you can see that they have been listening to people and, and they plan on implementing those things. So it's really been great working with them. And again, having lived in this city all my life, I've seen the city change uh, as far as the administration goes. And that's another thing I'm like completely excited about is I feel like we have a whole new city again. For more information, follow along at theneighborhoods.org or check out your neighborhood page for more information. Join Council President Brenda Jones and Council Member Janae Ayers as they present the Small Business Empowerment Fair in District 2. 
The purpose of this event is to empower existing and future business owners who are looking to expand their operation, contract with the city, and locate funding and identify resources. July 12th at the Northwest Activity Center from 4 to 8 p.m. For more information, visit www.detroitmi.gov. There's nothing worse than wasting time. Well, maybe waiting in lines. But now I can pay my water bill from my phone, tablet, or laptop. All it takes is a quick click and bam, I can check, manage, and pay my water bill from anywhere. That means more time with the family at Rouge Park, more time for myself on the river walk, or just at home on out of drive. I can pay my water bill anywhere. It's that easy. So skip the line and pay your bill online. Visit www.detroitmi.gov slash pay my water bill to register today. Shh. Mom's not here today. She's out getting her monthly spa treatment. But I'm Jay Lauren and I'm a 12 year old who loves to cook healthy food. I decided I'd come in to make a special treat today. I'm making sweet potato donuts. Let's get on into the recipe. Sweet potatoes are an excellent source of vitamin A, C, and potassium. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna leave all of the measurements in the description box. So you're gonna need the flesh of one baked sweet potato, flour, cinnamon, and salt, um, warm water, active dry yeast, coconut sugar, non-dairy milk, and vegan butter. First step is we're gonna heat our non-dairy milk and butter on the stove top. You wanna heat this until the, all of the butter is melting. While the butter is melting, we can mix the active dry yeast and the warm water together. Mix it thoroughly so that there are no clumps. All right, now I'm just gonna mix together the flesh of our sweet potato. Along with our coconut sugar. So you can get coconut sugar from your local grocery store um, with all like near maple syrup and all of your other organic sugars. Set your butter and milk mixture aside. All right. And when your sweet potato and sugar is well mixed together, make sure that your cinnamon, flour, and salt is combined all together. So I'm just mixing together the flour, cinnamon, and salt all the way. You're going to combine in a large mixing bowl together the sweet potato mix and your butter and milk mixture. I'm just mixing this all the way through, making sure that it's not super clumpy. And now we're just gonna wait until our yeast is fully foamed up and it's activated. So our yeast is going to help um, our sweet potato donuts rise and you can use it in breads as well and it's actually activated by the sugar. Now that it's foamed up, we're just gonna add it into our sweet potato and our butter and milk mixture. Now I'm just gonna combine all together. All right, I'm just 
gonna set this aside and I'm gonna slowly start mixing in our dry ingredients. So I just add a little bit at a time and mix together. And we're just gonna repeat this process a couple of times. Add in some more. And you'll see it'll start to form into a dough-like consistency. I'm mixing it until all of the flour, until I can't really see the flour anymore. Now that our dough is done, we're gonna let it rise in an oiled bowl. Now I just put the dough in an oiled bowl and I'm gonna put a damp cloth over top and I'm gonna let it rise for one hour. I'm so excited for these donuts. So now we're back and it's all ready and it has now doubled in size. So we're just gonna pour it out right onto a nice floured surface and it just slides right out since we put the oil in there and we're gonna knead it this is my kneading technique. I just hold it with one hand and I knead like this. And when it's nice and it's not sticky anymore, kind of it's nice and floury. This is a really nice dough. It's soft. You guys can have to see. Yeah. So now we're going to put it in a dough ball and roll it out. All right. So I have my floured rolling pin, and we're just gonna start rolling. <laughs> All right, so I just kinda do it to make it in kind of a circular shape. So what I do is I kinda go each way. All right, so this is pretty, it's about the right thickness, I guess. This side I can roll out a little bit more. I want it to be about half inch thick, I'd say. And now if you have a circle cookie cutter, you can use that, or a glass if you have that. But I'm just gonna use a um, mason jar lid, this part of it, and I'm just going to make it into like little circles here. I'm gonna pull them out. And here's kind of your donut shape. Or base, I guess. And I'm just gonna do that all around. So now we're gonna cover them and let them rise for another half hour and then they'll be ready to fry. I'm so excited. All right guys, we're back and they've risen. So now if you wanna take a healthier take on these, you can actually just bake them since they're yeasted and they're already in their like shape that they need to be in. But we're gonna fry them to get the full effect of a donut. You can have a treat every once in a while. So we're gonna make a basic cinnamon sugar to just keep the donuts pretty simple and plain. So we've used this just organic coconut sugar and just some cinnamon. And I just mix those two together and it's just like our basic organic healthy cinnamon sugar. Time to fry. So I'm just going to pick it up and wrap it in there. And yeah, just use kind of, and I'm gonna put in a couple donut holes as well. Oh, well, they actually don't look bad, they look good. You can kind of see it's puffing up. I'm getting really golden, so we can flip that one over. These donut holes as well. So for your donuts, you want them to cook for about a minute and a half on each side. Okay, so I'm gonna 
flip that over. And you can see it's getting nice and golden brown and crispy on top. They look so good. These ones, don't let it get a little more golden. All right, so you want it to be more of like this, like nice golden color. You don't want it super dark or darker than that, really. So, yeah, that's like a nice color that you want. Donut holes, you don't need to cook them as long, of course, because they're smaller. Piece is just dough, so. Now this is your done donut. You can see really nice golden brown, crispy. And then, yeah, we're just putting it on the paper towel so that it kind of gets the excess oil off of there because we don't want all that oil. Now, um, while this batch is cooking, I'm gonna show you guys how to make the paleo chocolate. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna mix together some coconut oil. I'm just gonna melt this in the microwave or if you can get a double boiler. All right, now that our coconut oil is melted, we're gonna add just some raw cacao powder. And some maple syrup to add a little bit of sweetness so it's not bitter from the cacao. So now we're just gonna dress our donuts. Um, so with the cinnamon sugar, we're just gonna dip it in our cinnamon sugar that we made earlier. And put that on a plate and then we're gonna make a chocolate one as well which is vegan paleo chocolate and it actually contains cacao powder which has antioxidants in it. So I'm just gonna drizzle some of that on there. And it will harden a bit later because it has coconut oil in it. And one of my favorite toppings is coconut. And you can add the chocolate and then you can put coconut. It's a really good combination. This is just the Bob's Red Mill Organic. Here's our final product. Who knew something vegan could taste this good? I mean, when people think of vegan, they think of fruits and vegetables, beans, but you can make donuts. And the best part is they're made out of sweet potatoes. So they still have something healthy in them. All right, thanks for watching. I hope that I helped your family eat a little bit healthier. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and click the notification bell. Not again. Bye, guys. If you like these stories and want to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel at City of Detroit and follow us on social media at City of Detroit and at Stories from DET. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Detroit 360. I'm your host, Sheila Grant. Thanks so much for watching.